graduated in 49 from college. I was born in 48. 1950, after his match with King Kong, uh, Kashi, yeah. uh, they told him he was too small to wrestle in the, in the Minneapolis area. So they sent him to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we lived in a trailer. This is funny. We only did two angles a year. That's right. And was that a, a quota, or it just kind of worked that's out that way? That's all that we did. No, that was that <laughs> burnt. That's it. You don't give him any more than that. He was such a, a believer in giving the people um, the impression, when you got in the ring, you better make those people believe this is real. Yeah. And he, he was so... I, I, I guess the way he, you know, with his wrestling background, he didn't want people knocking it all the time. Oh, a bunch of bullshit, this much bullshit, you know? And he made guys wrestle. Vern always looked for guys that had credentials to begin with. Chris credentials. Taylor was heavyweight wrestler. Patera was a weightlifter in the Olympics. You know, a lot of he these guys. He liked athletes. Had, I mean, yeah. his, his presentation to the sport was different than what New York, the WWF had. Vince is sitting next to him. Stephanie and Triple H are over here. He says, Vince never really wanted to put you out of business. <laughs> Who the fuck? Are you kidding? Go back to the room and there's Hogan sitting down on the floor. Almost in tears. I said, man, what's the matter, big man? I can't make it. And I said, hey, you just need some help. You need some training. You got to find out, figure out who you are. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, come to the AWA and we'll, we'll show you. Uh, there was about five guys left in the ring and Andre had thrown somebody out and he backed up and he backed right into Hogan. And they just kind of turned and looked yeah. at each other and the place went. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. They were just waiting for something. So Vern said, okay, that's it. He called Vince the next day, said, Vince Sr., I got to get, get Andre for February, the whole month of February. Okay, you got him. So he gets this telegram from Tampa, Florida. Uh, I'm not coming back. And Vern says, Tampa, Florida, it's fucking Eddie Graham. <laughs> because they used to rib each other yeah. all the time. So he figures it's a rib, so he throws it away. Gene was just the interviewer. Gene worked for the TV station. He was in sales. And Marty got... I wonder why. He could probably sell me the glasses on my own face, right? Yeah, I think so. He was... <laughs> <laughs> Lunch with Gene. Rick Martell, right. great right yeah. worker. Well, that Didn't was... You know what? You, know who, you know who sold that one? Was Nick. He wanted Rick. He wanted to drop... Because he had Rick. a nice baby face to work with, and he was athletic. He was, but, but he didn't have the... I didn't, you know, I I didn't see Rick any, Martell I, getting I over in Green Rick. Bay at a bar, no. right? <laughs> oh, he got over with the girls, but he didn't have the, 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 the men didn't buy it. Stan was a handful. He would have worked out. He just didn't listen. He didn't want to... He didn't want to listen. I wanted to get your take on the stuff. I've heard it from Bachwinkle. I've heard it secondhand from the Baron because the Baron wasn't on a plane. But <laughs> the day Mad Dog opened the door, it's, it, this it, it's is evergreen. It's a long, it's a long, evergreen. It's a long story. But it, I'm we gonna, got time. I'm going to tell it the way it <laughs> happened. Okay? I didn't know, but he had popped this Quaalude, and once in a while he would he would drink a pint of whiskey before he'd go in the ring. Just once in a while. Every, just yeah, once in a just while. Once in a while. Usually it was in the cage matches, but this night. <laughs> He takes the pill and <clears throat> chugs it down with a pint of whiskey. And honest to God, we thought another plane hit us and took the tail off. That's what it felt oh, like, geez. the plane jerked that much. So we're all down, and we come up, and we look up, and here's Mad Dog. He's standing in the back of the plane. He's opened the door. <laughs> and the pilot told us, the only plane built that had chains on the door, otherwise it would blown <clears throat> off and hit the tail, and yeah. boom, down we go. The top's up and there's a chain hanging out and he's hanging out it and all you can see is his back. He's going, it's so peaceful I feel like flying tonight. <laughs> and the pilot's screaming at us. He says, get him in. What's going on back there? He said, we, yeah, we think he's going to jump. You guys made the deal with Jerry Jarrett in Memphis and started working together. I'm, I'm going to stay impartial because I'm, I'm a Tennessee guy, but you know. Uh, I know you are. <laughs> don't, don't You're probably going to get, I'll, I'll tell you the real story when you get done with the, your question. So you can stay in partial, <laughs> but that, that's the story and that's the way it went down. And then. And nobody has heard that story till tonight. Well, you know, I hate to, I hate to uh, you know, to really talk bad about anybody or put them down, especially on a video like this, but I guess it's about time. Sure, go ahead. All right. Bischoff had called me two days before I'm going to start down. He says, hey, what do you think has to be done down here to change this thing around? I said, well, what are they trying to do? And if you're trying to compete with McMahon, you guys are way off base. There's a lot of it you have to do. Here's what you have to do. You have to get a new look on TV. You have to do this, this, and this. TV ratings start coming up. Pay-per-view increases a little bit. So I said, hey, Eric, 
where's my where's our bonuses? Mike and I have bonuses coming in our contracts. Oh, you don't have any bonuses? I said, well, what do you mean? I looked at it. There was nothing in there. I found out later he took all our stuff and put it in his contract. <laughs> well, at least somebody got it. Then. Somebody so, got it. You know. They had their niche and their TV, you know, finally caught on everywhere. If you had good time slots and you were steady in that time slot, uh, my dad said wrestling is part of Americana. The story of Vern Gagne is the story of the AWA, and this is that story.